Hello, you've reached double O nil. My name's Tris, and this channel is all about model railways, okay? And it's about my journey with the model railway uh, over the past year from when I started. I've done a whole number of episodes which have ranged from just building your baseboards, putting some track down, then there's some 3D printing involved with making my own little steam engine from narrow gauge line, which is really cool, as well as things from my main line where I've been 3D printing buildings and various other things. It's been really, really good. And over that year, I've got to 4,000 subscribers, which is, for me, amazing. Uh, when I got to basically like the first 10 that popped up, I was like, there's 10 people that want to watch me <laughs> work on my railway. So for me, that was brilliant. And it always gave me that little bit of uh, motivation to do a bit more, more subscribers. I got people commenting. They were saying nice things, let's say. And so that gives you that extra bit of drive. And over time, there's a community being built up. There's people that you're getting to know their names. And that's wonderful. That's actually something I look forward to seeing some of the same names pop up asking me either a question or telling me what they liked about something and it gives me an idea of what I want to do next but then there's people that haven't commented before that felt compelled to write something and for me I keep saying that that gives me the confidence to keep doing what I'm doing so I just want to say a big thank you to all of you that have subscribed if you're not already a subscriber and you watch just you know because it's there um, but you like what I'm doing hit subscribe you don't want to miss out on some of the things that I do. I do a live stream every other week to this. So I have my videos every two weeks, which I find take ages to edit. Maybe I take a long time, who knows? And in between, I take a little bit of a break and I build up a model, whatever it is. Might be a laser cut kit um, uh, or a plastic moldy kit of a wagon or, or whatever. And I have a lot of fun interacting with you all. And yeah it's been really really good fun so if you ever see some lives up there i haven't just switched to doing lives i'm doing trying to do one and then the other um there might be one or two lives popping up if i've been shot off halfway through a live and i load it back up i'm still new to all this so it's a whole lot of fun for me and hopefully for you watching you enjoy it too and uh yeah send me any comments if you're ever wondering um, if I could show you a bit more of something that I've missed or if there was something that you liked because then I kind of know all right, they liked seeing that next time maybe I share that with them where some things I share I think maybe they're not that interested in that who knows um, but all I'm trying to do is share my journey um, I'm not trying to do things let's say just to create something for you to watch it's basically my time when I get some hobby time I record it and I share with you all and I really enjoy this process of editing and, and sharing also my patrons have been a big support as well the patrons help make this happen um, that kind of bit of injection of a, a donation um, goes towards all these little bits and bobs that I kind of show you and I obviously put a lot of my own money and time into this um, but having patrons is that extra bit of support and encouragement to keep going and working hard so what i'll now talk about is what we're going to see on this episode there's quite a lot happened during this time the really fun bit for me was dealing with the loft on the right hand side as you've seen i insulated it and i boarded it that's not big news but the big thing for me is putting the boards in and how I'm going to do it. And I spent a lot of time thinking about how I'm going to do it and I couldn't figure it out. And I thought, how about I draw up the loft? I put all the trusses in, the back wall, I work out where the floor is, then start putting in parts of the railway. So I put the side that is already in and then I start mocking up what I want to do on the right hand side. But that was tricky. I actually um, struggled with that and I spoke to my brother and he uh, showed me a book which had um, a number of kind of plans from let's say the 20s to the 50s and it was really interesting and i found one that i kind of liked the look of and yeah from from there i was able to start sketching out my idea 
And this is my idea. Obviously, <laughs> it's just a sketch. I've been working things out. I've got lines going all over the place. But it gave me a point that now on CAD, I can start drawing the rest of it. Um, I'm reasonably proficient at using um, CAD, you know, computer aided design, and I was able to 3D model my layout and work out in levels of things I want to do, put some actual things on there. And so, as I'm talking about this, it's on the screen. You can see that I have the station, a good shed. Obviously, they're not in high detail. There's um, a bridge which I actually built, which is from In the Greenwood Laser and I've got that right in front of me. It's a wonderful kit, in fact. I've got it stacked up because I want to paint it. But it's a simple kit that comes together and it allows a car to go underneath and the locos to go over the top. Enough of that anyway. With that done, I now need to build my baseboards and I thought about the open plan idea because just having a single baseboard it didn't work I needed to cut down and things so I've started lower and I'm gonna have the line on kind of an embankment coming across and I'm gonna have a hill um, at one end we're gonna have a, a good not good <laughs> fiddle yard at the back where I keep all my uh, good things um, anyway yes yeah, so I'm gonna have possibly three to four lines I haven't completely worked out how much room I've got to play with I've um, got to the point that it will go into a tunnel to become part of that. One of the lines will be a run through, so it'll always be coming through, so there'll be three lines where I store different locos, and I want to be able to access it. And as I already have the roof coming down at a 45 degree angle, or not quite 45, it's a shallow angle than that, um, I want to be able to put my hands in there in, and access them. As well as maybe lift out the board, but because from the side view, if I take a shot or look at it, I want the what will now be a back scene the color of it to actually match the sky so we we'll see how that works out if not i can always change it and work it out in a different way so what we do is we'll go over to my recording let's say of my two days work of getting that all done and actually whilst i did that i was watching the warley um club youtube channel they did a fantastic um, display of basically two days of footage from what would have been let's say things from the real show if it had gone ahead and it really was wonderful so I want to say a big thank you to the guys involved in that um really was good really enjoyable for me I had my headphones on listening to it a lot I'd stop and watch here and there and it was fantastic so anyway let's go see what I did up there I'll chat to you about it and then we'll come back down here and have a chat about what we're doing next so, starting with the basics, you wonder how you're going to put these things together. Drilling holes, fitting bits that are reference points, putting small, very small, thin screws into your addresses. Obviously, you always wonder if there's another way, and I'm sure there are. But I've got these 3mm screws, so I feel that they're not going to upset things too much. But, obviously, I've got to make a triangle first here, and obviously make my right angle first, and then I need to join it up with a triangular piece as you've seen on the CAD image that I had I will be having an access point for me you know going up behind it which I will show you here it will require some crawling around so I'll probably put some carpet down on the on the floor on the boards so then I can crawl around here just cover myself up there kind of on display but I'll be able to get the camera take some video it'd be amazing so that's one thing that I'm looking forward to. But on with the building. I'm gonna make a triangle out of here. Recently got myself this cordless jigsaw and it's really good actually, really impressed with it. I'd been hand sawing things before and felt it was time to upgrade to a method which was uh, with some electronics involved. As you're seeing there, I'm hoovering up as I go. When I was using the polystyrene to do the insulation, I made a lot of mess on the first night. So I just thought I need to treat myself to a little hoover so I can keep this place under control. Um, so as I'm going, basically each cut I'm doing almost, I'm hoovering up. In a, you know, because if you tread in it, you tread it around, and then I go downstairs and I tread it all around the house, and it's yeah, it's not the most positive thing. So yeah, I'm being very um, good at taking care of keeping the place tidy because. 
Sometimes there's nothing worse than the area that you're working in being, well, dusty and yeah, it's a pain and you're finding it for days even though you've already hoovered downstairs. So anyway, I've pulled the sports up and now I'm doing my baseboards. Really, really simply put, it's, uh, I can't remember the size of the wood, I think it's 18 by 44 and I'm gluing it on and then I put screws in every kind of eight to 10 inches, whatever it is. Um, but I've got glue on in between those two bits to really hold it nicely. And then I put supports, one on each end, and then I kind of add some part way through. It's nine mil ply, that I've got hardwood ply, and it's obviously planed timber that I have here. But it should be st like pretty stable as a material, but lots of screws, glue, supports, it's gonna give you a better chance. The whole idea of this is I initially wanted to go open frame, but I can hack into this with my jigsaw. And that means that it doesn't matter that I have a baseboard underneath, I can still access what I need to and I can dip down lower. It's about uh, 100 millimeters lower, 10 centimeters um, from that top height going down there. I'm just putting some supports on there. What I thought about was obviously after doing that bottom bit, which is going to do a lot of supporting for all the other things going on, I wanted to work out with my lift out section what I'm going to do. And I thought instead of just adding on a section, I'll remake the um, one side of the lift out section. So things are going to line up. But that ends up making it a little bit better. I'm not using MDF anymore, which is all right because I coated it in varnish. But going to ply kind of gives it a bit of an upgrade. And at the time, funds weren't really available for it. But now things are a little bit better. Get myself some ply and obviously screwing it in. Put it together and I put varied supports in there. And as you can see, a bit of glue here and there, and it's going to be good. The one thing that I have to do on here is attach, as you would have seen on one of my previous videos, the lift out kind of pieces that help with the alignment, where I home did some homemade dowels. You can see just there, those little metal parts. I'm unscrewing them now, taking them off the original one, and I'm going to put it on the new one. And the, the whole idea of this is so when I put it back together each time, because you need to access the boiler for when the engineer comes, um, I will be able to put the tracks aligned in the right place each time. So that's now there, pop it together, and it's good, it's solid. So with that done, I want to do what will be my fiddle yard, as, or you know, the third track pass. And to do that, basically, same kind of thing, I had my 2.4 meter pieces of wood, I chopped them to length, I mark bits out until it's right, and then a glue. Then we use the screws and it will go together. Um, the important bit for here is really it's just going to need to be in the right position. And my wonder was how am I going to support this? But I think what I will do is I'll just pop some screws in, hold it in place, tiny bit of support underneath just with the screws. And then I'll use the supports that I've put across the trusses um, coming up and supporting it properly that way. And the board that it's currently resting on, that will come forwards towards me and that will be purely used for doing the work um, for, well, you know, the main track for the main layouts and the fiddle yard area, which will have a few tracks on there, hopefully, will be good. So this is obviously where I've kind of ended up. I need to do a bit of work now on the rest of the frame and figure some things out, but that's fine. I'm actually really looking forward to it, but what it really needs is a coat of paint that's my big thing and i've got I'm using some hornby magazine gray um it's quite a rare pot um i don't know how many pots they've got left but i thought i'd get myself a pot of that obviously when i watch mike wilde do his videos on the hornby magazine he always paints things gray afterwards and it makes it look really professional so i'm like i'm gonna make mine look professional too or well, that's the uh, the aim about actually it really brightens up the room having that and so what i'm going to be doing is painting all my dresses seal them up a bit more um, and make the whole room just look well I feel great in a really nice place to be in the brighter the loft is kind of the nicer place it is for me because sometimes I find it a bit gloomy and it's all right being up there but if you're up there all day and then you come downstairs it's kind of like a bit of a contrast so I'm painting this up and I think what I'll end up doing is you know all the other areas that I work on I'll be painting it in this uh, like I say Hornby magazine grey so you see it's painted up here actually the gray really blends in nicely with the blue sky uh, quite a quite a nice blend there um, i promise you it's not the same color but 
I'm pretty happy with that and it just gives it a nice finish and it means when I put things on it it will just it will just look right if you know what I mean the great thing is the view from here with the camera where I can watch locos come round and get some really nice shots you know for me I'll be enjoying them I'll be able to take some really nice film here as they come underneath the W9 layout and go from there so really really pleased but anyway back to me Okay, so before I talk to you about what I am going to be showing you, you might know from the title as well as the description, I just want to say a big thanks to Tim Wells. He sent me this wonderful photo. I don't know exactly what engine it is. I believe it's like a 2MT tender um, engine, but it's gorgeous. He took these photos himself. He um, put it on a uh, frame for me and sent it over and I'm really grateful of that and I'll be putting it up in a special place which would be wonderful so I just want to say thank you to Tim if you guys are interested in his photos and you want to have a look at his website I'll have the information just here and I'll put a link in the description below um, I love all this kind of thing I want to support people that are creative and try and do what I can to you know just help people in that action so yeah just check out his uh, website and go from there okay what we're going to be looking at now is my new loco it's wonderful I'm very happy with it but you're going to see some pre-recorded stuff that I did um, previously obviously I have to do things first and then I do this afterwards but we go and take a look at that and then we go down to my dad's I've been asked many times more and more questions about my dad's railway so I wanted to cover that during this filming uh, to look at some of the aspects in regards to what his layout is based on and you know how we got to his decisions on certain things but I won't ruin any of that now what we can do is we'll go into the kitchen and have a look at what I am up to Anyway, see you there. So here I am in the kitchen, as I do when I come to do my running of the locos, just to give them a, just get them out the box, have a look at them on a clean surface. I've got my cutting mat out. Not that I'm going to be cutting anything, but I'm going to be having a good look at this new logo that I have. Um, so a bit of history for me with this logo is I had one when I was younger. I still have it. It's uh, a Backman one and it's based off the Digcrit Railway uh, one. Well, it was, it was a replica. It was a model of it. And now I have um, a new version of it and it's by Dapol or Daypol, however they like to be said. I understand it's named after David and Pauline. So, um, we'll go for David, unless it's David, of course, um, but I'll stop talking about that. When I first saw that uh, Daypol were doing this, I was pretty excited and it looked good in the pictures. Um, the tricky thing is going from pictures to reality is always two things. I haven't opened this up yet. Um, it's come in a very, very nice box, um, but when I saw that um, uh, Rails of Sheffield put a pre-order on. I thought fine do it straight away uh, as soon as I saw it I went on and, and clicked that and and it came uh, a couple of weeks later I think it was maybe two weeks can't remember exactly and uh, they shipped it over. Um, unluckily um, it, I have things shipped to my work so if you see any dresses come up it's not my home um, and basically um, I didn't get it till Monday um, because we're not open on a Saturday so it was a pleasure when I got into the office on Monday and I saw this um, there so really wonderful for me so we'll have a look at this so what we do is look at the packaging because the packaging is it's solid really nice box actually you feel like not that you want to but if you did drop it this is well and truly protected so but we will be testing that right um, so it is a Great Western Railway 6300 260 Mogul steam locomotive um, and I got mine in the Great Western kind of livery which is what I do is what I like I know a lot of you uh, 
probably have your flavors, your different things that you like. You've got your lined BR greens or your black BR, um, but I like the original Great Western look, as you've probably seen on some of my other videos, so check them out. Let's open this up. Okay, it's nice. Kind of air suction as I'm lifting it off. I've got a bit of foam covering. It's my first um, Daypole engine that I've purchased, though I have a Daypole pug um, of my grandfather's. That's the only other one that I believe I have. So let's see what's changed. I'm sure a lot because this is looking very nice already. So we got our owner's manual, very nice, quite thick actually, bit of weight to it. Um, I'll have a little look at that later. What does it say inside? It's got a quick start of how to use it. I guess there's bits to do with DCC, which isn't something that I'll be looking at if I'm honest, but it's very nice. They've really gone to town. Um, fantastic. So maybe if I ever go DCC, all these bits will come uh, very much in handy. So I'll keep hold of them. So now I'll get this out there. I can see the, uh, the paint through it. Let's get it out, put the box out the way. Packagings to the standard that we're seeing from many companies now. Given a slide, a slide off. Then we've got a little packet of bits in there. Not sure exactly what they are, but I'm sure it makes sense. Now for me, this loco was the first loco. How do we get this apart? Oh, it's in here. It's got bigger catcher. Okay, pops up. This is the first kind of tender engine that I got when I was younger. So I could actually run my like passenger trains and everything. So that was great. Let's get this out without damaging it. But it looks really good. The coal looks really interesting. I've not seen the coal as detailed as this before. It's loose, so I guess you can get to what's underneath, but it's not going to be falling out. Oh no, it would have fallen out. Okay, so you can have it empty or with coal, but that looks really good. I'll get closer up bits on that. Got the details in the tender look really, really smart. One of them slightly bent, but that might be me getting it out. I won't try and bend it back, I'll bust it. But the tender looks cool. The word cool doesn't really justify these things, does it? I don't know why we check it because I never see it happening, but the buffers obviously move. Details looking nice. Okay. We get the main loco out. Nice. I'm sure a few of you already have these. And a few of you are probably thinking about getting one. But on first glances, it's looking nice. It's got a bit of weight to it. I don't know if it's because it's on a, a different type of body, but it looks very, very nice. The wheels have got that kind of nickel chrome kind of finish to them. You can see on the um, the bit that holds the tender, it's uh, got the contacts there, which I guess would be for all our power. It's looking smart. It's got some of the red details that will be on the, um, the chassis, which is great. You see that on some of them where the inside of the frames they paint it all red so that's nice. For me, to have another one of these my layout is wonderful. And this one looks very detailed compared to my original one which is, what, 20 years old, 25 years old? I'll just couple this together. And there it is. Looks very smart. Does it uncouple? It does? Okay. So inside the cab, there's lots of painted details. I understand the um, the fire area flickers, but I guess that's once it's moving. So I don't have DCC, so I won't be on power all the time. So I'd have to be going quite quick to see that, I guess. But yeah, they've gone to the time to put a lot of detail in there on that cab. Probably some of the most amount of detail I've seen in one. I need to compare it to my my recent Hornby Locos because they've got a lot inside. So it'd be interesting to see. But no, looks very, very nice. Just need some people to go inside. A lot of my Locos don't have any drivers. And uh, obviously they can't drive themselves, can they? What we do is we'll run this backwards and forwards, just make sure it works 
and then um, I'm going to head over to my father's and we'll give it a run round. I'm going to take my um, original Buckman loco and I believe he has possibly a scratch built one um, but I need to have a chat with him and find out if it's definitely the case. But yeah, let's give it a quick run and then we'll go for a little drive. I still enjoy this, putting the bits of track together where you've got your fish plates. It's kind of crisp how they go together. Kind of picking and choosing what you're going to put on. Something very satisfying about it. Makes you want to buy a train set, you know, just to go through that process of just clipping it together and having that fun. So I've got my BT's controller. We'll put that behind. And we've got my loco here. And we'll just see how well it works. And uh, I'm sure it'd be fine. So it's got 10 to pick up. As well as the main driving wheels. I couldn't see anything on the, um, is it the pony truck that sits at the front? Okay, let's give it a go. I think this will be forwards. Okay, so first movement, it seems to work absolutely fine. Not putting a lot of power into this. Seems to be smooth, obviously everything's fresh, so. It's not really crazy smooth, but it's really nice actually. It looks so nice as well, the front of the cab, not cab, we had the smoke box. It looks really smart because on this it was it was very small as it came to the front. It was a really tapered boiler by the look of it. I'm used to seeing the larger ones. So that does look nice. And obviously the the area that they can the you know the driver or fireman can stand on in front before they open up um, the smoke box. It's quite large in proportion to that boiler. Looks really, really good. Not boiler, but in the smoke box. I guess it's part of the boiler, isn't it? Well, kind of. But it looks great. Looking at the coal, looks fantastic. Not seen anything like it, actually. It looks really smart, honestly. Not nah, really pleased with this. I can't see any flicker from the firebox. Maybe it's going to be running fast. Or maybe I just need DCC. Maybe I take that step one day, but I need a bit of advice before I start doing that. Maybe I talk to my brother about it. But no, it's a nice little loco. Okay. Let's bring that back to the centre. So I'll uh, pop this all together, and uh, we'll travel down and go see my uh, my father, and uh, see how well it runs around the layout. here at my dad's um, model railway room. Um, obviously I've travelled down, we've had a little go of the loco and now we're going to run it on the line. We've only got one line available to us because you've been doing a bit of work. Yeah it's a little bit. Yeah. Mm, so we're going to go through that afterwards so yeah. stay tuned for that but we've run the um, mogul round, it seems to be all right and so I've just put some coaches on and we'll just have a few little shots and then we'll come back and have a chat with uh, my father afterwards about what he's been up to.
Okay, so we've just had a bit of fun with the uh, the engine, run it around a, a bunch of times. We had the one track, so we had some um, kind of technical work getting it onto the station, uh, having a pull out on there. Um, but it seems to run really nicely. Um, Dad's track on this centre section, which we're going to be talking about, um, actually has some... Um, it's not perfect because he's ripped it all up and he put it back down just for me um, today. So we've had some fun with that. Um, but anyway, the Daypole Loco seems to be really, really nice. I'm really happy with the quality. Um, what do you think of it, Dad? Yeah, it's lovely. Lovely detailed and one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. I think yeah. my brother was looking at uh, possibly getting one as well. So he will have a good yeah, look nice. at it. Yeah, yeah. So you've got one that you built up from, was it a mainline kit or something? It was an original mainline. Where's the box somewhere? The yeah, original. original sort of old mainline loco. Um, but I rebuilt the chassis. Okay. Um, well, I detailed it a bit with some coal. Mm -hmm. I think the, otherwise, the tenders as it so as it got came. Fireman in there as well. Oh yes, yeah. No driver, but fireman. Well, he, he can do the <laughs> he job. He's been watching the out. driver for a while. Yeah, probably fell out. Yeah. Um, but as it was a mainline chassis, it was mm. sort of lousy, noisy, and rough and everything. I've got a so, penny like that. It yes. sounds actually like a steam engine when it's going. Yeah. Yeah, they, were, they are a bit iffy, but well, this one certainly was. Mm. Um, so I built a brass, um, I think it's Perseverance chassis for it. Okay. So it's that's the name of the company, not what you used to do it. No, it was mm. the ma it was the make. Yeah, Perseverance mm. was the, the people that made the chassis. Okay. So um, yes, and so the gear gearbox and everything in there. So mm. um, yes, it did. It does run a bit better than it it did previously. So yeah. Yeah. What gearbox and I bits think, you have inside? I think that was a branch line. I think it was a branch lines one, a mul branch okay. lines multi box mm -hmm. in there with a probably a DS10. I think it's a DS10 motor in there. Yes. Probably. Yeah. Can't quite see. I can't remember. Well, it's fine. We'll, we'll get some. We'll get some shots of yeah. what we can see there at least okay. anyway. Yeah. No, that's okay. great. So yeah. the one thing that is very interesting for me is every time we come into this room, we have to crawl. Um, and there's not a great amount of room and for me I'm, I'm a bit chunkier and it's a bit more difficult and like when my brother comes around he's like oh come on um, but dad's a bit more slender than us so it's a bit oh, easier. Getting on a bit though. So. Yeah and so the question yeah. is um, is when my father gets older um, it's not going to get any easier and he's probably going to not come in here anymore. So mm. the idea is that we're well Dad's going to be doing all the work, but I've been trying to encourage him, um, and I think Mum has as well. Yes. Um, Keep so, the off. Yeah, to cha make it a lift out form of section. So mm. what we do is I'll get the camera looking at what we're doing here, um, and I guess you can explain what your plans are, um, and we can go through that. Yes. Well, yeah. originally it was a lift out section with four dowels, quite crude ones. Not none of your. You didn't make it yourself. Ones. Yes. Yeah. Just no, that's fine. They were sort of improvised ones. Yeah. And it was quite stiff to get the thing off, and you were always worried about damaging the track. That's right. As you were pulling it off and whatever. And after much um, being moaned at for, um, you know, people having to sort of grovel underneath. Yeah, I never, I never said a word. No, 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 no. But because it was stiff to get it out, I never, um, I hardly ever took it off. So decided to make it a, a hinge rather than a lift out section. Mm. Trouble was, because it has an embankment on it, or it did have an embankment. It did. Where's that gone, Dad? Uh, that's down here. Ah. Uh, nice and lightweight. It's, um, I, so it, luck, luckily I was able to saw it off when I saw underneath, um, and uh, got, got the thing off. Hmm. So I'm going to have that as a lift up, uh, sorry, as a hinge up section. Put, okay. Put these the hinges in there and there, hopefully. Yep. And then it will just come down and have a couple of dowels this side to locate it. Then I'll use some of your um, track um, joiners that you've, okay. you've made me yep. to replace all of this to, properly with the um, to match the CNL track. So I'll have those there to replace these crude, crude ones. Yeah. Um, so that will be that bit. But the other problem was how to do. To be able to lift up, you can't have the embankment on there. That's right, so, it will go so, crashing so through I, what's already there. So that's why I chopped it off, and mm -hmm. I'm going to put this on a... I cut the piece of wood off that was there, the, the ply that was there, that was about 9mm. Right. So, or 3 8 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I put some 8 inch ply on there, which leaves a quarter of an inch, or 6mm, mm -hmm. which I'll mount 
you know, put this on a piece of that, and then I'll, dowel, I'll put this, have this removable with dowels again, mm -hmm. so it lines up with the, um, so, so it will come back on here yeah. on its, on its so nice it pops piece of in. Wood, so it pops in all precisely, hopefully. And I guess your, your scenery um, will work out quite nice anyway, you'll be able to make it yeah, work with every time you drop yeah, in. Yeah, it'll, so it'll be a bit of a line, maybe we can disguise it along here somehow. Yeah, you get a bit of hedgerow yeah. right at the bottom. Oh yeah, there's something there, yes. Mm. Um, and also, at the same time, took the, I'm going to take the opportunity to move this point along to the end. Okay. Because it was quite, this was quite, this track used to come out quite at an acute angle. Did it cause a bit of trouble point. for you? I yes, see. Yes, I, I think that it used to come out and then curve around. It didn't look mm -hmm. very good. So if I move the point to here, this can just come out virtually straight. Straight I see. Down to here. So that so makes that connection join. much It'll nicer it for you. Nicer, yes. Yeah. So I see you've already taken up some bits to, yes. to do that. Oh yeah. So I just got to cut this cut this point off there because they're actually joined together. I made them as one piece. Oh, I so see. I'll, um, wow. I'll slip that. So these that are your own there. homemade yes, points, all of, basically. Yeah, homemade copper clad ones. Yeah. Yeah. But I think because I knew they were going to be stuck together, I, I think I needed the wood. Well, that was good planning at the time. Oh but yes. Obviously, there's I'll nothing just, wrong with redoing. Yeah, things. yeah. I just cut it there, moved along a bit, mm -hmm. and it'll be a, a lot nicer entry for this yep. bit of track coming down. Because down that bit kind of comes up behind here, um, and then it comes down. Yeah, if we can see it in any way. Um, we'll have to. I'll get some shots in there. But that comes along here, and it goes up all the way until we get to this outside lane here, isn't it? Yeah, the outside. Mm -hmm. Yes, the outside one. Yeah, so that come along here, and then we work across, and then we just go all the way up to the station, which is really cool. No, there's there's a huge difference here. So before the height was where, Dad? It was level with the track. Okay. It just came straight across. Yep. No, so it's about so high. Yes. Um, which didn't really look very realistic. So... Very flat. Yes, it, I, all I was going to do was just have fields along there, so you mm -hmm. had Vista, you could see the trains going along and had, you just looked through the fields at the trains. Yeah. But I think it would look a lot more realistic to actually come to have a, yeah, have a road coming in here and then sort of sweeping round and then sort of going back up. Mm -hmm. So it would, so it eventually would join that That's one. That's great, yeah, because we've got the dairy. Anyone that hasn't seen this before, is some scratch built buildings you've been starting to do. There'll be a hill coming down here, so um, as well. I don't, I don't want it to come down too far, but it will come down, sort of say to, the, well, just follow it down, sort of like that. Yep. The tunnel will be about there, bring the hill yeah, down. Yeah, you're saying about the entrance. So the entrance will be a bit further forward than the yeah. one that's just up yes. the top here. The top, the top one will probably be sort of about there, yeah. I should think. So then you can blend it into the yes. end gauge layout that's sort yes. of my so, mother's just at the top. Yeah. So on your layout, Dad, obviously I, I've always idolised it because it's from when I was little. Um, you've got obviously this beautiful landscape that Grandad originally did the work on. It's all been painted on, which makes me think I need to do a bit of painting of rolling countryside outside the layout. Um, but your layout is probably based on something, I'm assuming, uh, something yes, that inspired the, you. The, the track plan itself is new key um, because it was a, a nice terminus, great western terminus. Um, but the station building is based loosely based on Henley, and with the, the the overall roof, I think Newquay just had long awnings coming up the platform. But um, I like I wanted a, I wanted a an overall roof, mm -hmm. an overall sort of, sort of platform roof sort of thing, station roof. So that's where that's originated from. But so it's it, it is fairly well based on the um so the new the actual track plan is. Something like New Key, okay, virtually the same. Yeah, the, the embankments where that comes round into the back that's originally was I think it was a heart and in on the New Key track plan it shows a branch going to the harbour. So that's my excuse for something coming in through the, uh, I through see. the yard because it's yep. just an afterthought. Oh, I could find I wanted a, a loop going round the top, mm -hmm. so I had a continuous run coming through, and that was the so that was the add-on later on, the embankment all, up, all the way along the back. Yes, the no, it really fits in nicely as well. And once you've finished the dairy, it'll be really good. Yes. Um, and obviously, so you've got your good drive. Was that part of the plan from the Nuki bit? Or was that what you wanted I think to add that in? Was, no, I think that was virtually on the plan. I mean, might, might have left the odd siding out between the platform and the good... I think there may have been one or two more on the original plan. Yeah. So I just left. I may have... No. 
restriction of space sort of thing. I had to yeah. leave one or two out, but it's it's notionally you no, know, it is virtually the same. Maybe some of the proportions might be less. <laughs> the mm. time sort of fit. No, that it's probably a lot of it's foreshortened, but um, mm. well, yeah, of course. Yeah. To get scale, and it's probably stretched over a slightly oh, yeah. bigger area. Oh, yeah, it's about three times as long in real life. And then, think. then you have what I feel is probably the best, uh, apart from getting to dig at railway itself, um, the best <laughs> scene where you have a turntable, loads of engines, a coaling stage, as well as a very nice uh, engine shed up at the end there. Yes. So, what's this modelled on? That's um, probably sort of dig cut, although dig cuts are double the. It's a four door one, whereas this has only got the two. The mm -hmm. doors are missing at the moment, they've fallen off somewhere. That's fine. And they're probably, probably inside. Like in progress. Yes, oh yes. Yeah. Well, it's restoration in a way, because it's quite, right. quite old. Mm. Um, it's probably older than me, I'm guessing. Yes, I think I was making that before I was married, even. I think oh, I was right. probably. So, probably about getting on for four, well, 40 ish years old, probably. Mm. They're the same, the, t the two of them, really. The, the engine shed. I see, because the, the coding stage is, is that based off the kit? Yes, it's just it? a standard Great Western culling stage. Yes. Yeah, it'd be good if you could buy yeah. them in a ratio kit, wouldn't it? Yes, um, I think you can get a cardboard, a print scale scene sort of printed one. But is that what Williams got on his layout? I'm Would not sure if that's um, Bill Teasy or one, one of the co okay, the makeup it's one ones. Of the... But they actually do one that looks like that. Yes. This, the one where you buy that, you, you print out the, um, you download the the sheets and then you just print them onto you stick them onto cardboard and then cut it out. Mm. So um so say so they um they make one like that. And you've got your signal box. Yeah. That was an original I think mean, that's a prototype um cardboard kit and I okay. think I made a plastic roof for it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. That one. So that's the key features of obviously you've got your nice big trees, we've talked about them before. And at the back you've got a road that goes up the hill. And um, then yes. obviously a bridge that allows the engines to go through, really. Yeah. And then obviously the hills go rolling away after that. Yes, the station was called, it's called Clayford, but that's the yeah. house I was in when I was little. Okay. When I was you know, a boy sort of thing. That yes. was my mum and dad's house, that was the name of it. And I, I think my original railway was called the same thing. That's been brilliant um, talking to dad about his layout. A lot of you have been asking questions about it. It's a DC layout on your yes. own built controls. I think we've talked about that before in a previous yes, episode. Yes, so it's a comp speed type. Ones, yeah. yeah, you have some direct uh, ones with no comp speed some, on one I've of them. I've got some DC, as well. yes, yeah. some hand handheld DC ones. Yeah. Yes, and that's made. because the yeah. locos don't always run so yes, nice. they're caught at very efficient motors. They don't like, mm -hmm. the, don't like the feedback. So you, you want virtually DC with a bit of pulsing yes. rather than a, a feedback one. I see. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions about us layout, we can feature that on future videos. Um, but yeah, big thank you for yeah. having me here to run yeah. my logo because yeah. my layout's currently in pieces at, at the moment, as you've seen. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so thank you for watching as always. Thank you for my latest subscribers as well as the ones that have stuck around since the beginning and a huge thank you to my patrons your names are here um, I will see you soon on the next episode probably a live stream might be popping up here and there with me doing my bits that I do but I will be continuing every two weeks to release my own kind of edited footage for you to enjoy um, I always wonder if you think oh, I'm just gonna do live streams now but now I'm gonna focus on keep doing my two week stints on and um, getting my uh, videos out that are going to be all produced for you but anyway we'll see you soon see you next time and take care bye bye